Cove Bible Advance, Saturday morning. Amen. This is the ninth day of January, wow. and uh, we are in a new year, yeah. and God is still God. Oh, That's yes. true. Amen. Just as he promised he would be. Amen. Mm -hmm. I shared something a few minutes ago with uh, those who are in the house here. And uh, I was asked if I would share it after the cameras start rolling. So let me do that. This is entitled, I Love This Analogy. And it simply says, when God wanted to create fish, he spoke to the sea. When God wanted to create trees, he spoke to the earth. But when God wanted to create man, he turned to himself. Wow. And God said, let us make man in our own image and in our likeness. Note, if you take a fish out of water, it will die. <clears throat> when you remove a tree from the soil, it will die. Likewise, when man is disconnected from God, he dies. God is our natural environment. We were created to live in his presence. We have to be connected to him because it is only in him that our life exists. Let's stay connected to God. We recall that water without fish is still water, but fish without water is nothing. The soil without a tree is still soil. But the tree without soil is nothing. God without man is still God. But man without God is nothing. And that's a truth. And we stand by it. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Amen. I want to talk to you today out of the word of God. Using for a title. Don't look back. This is the second week in a new year, 2021. And uh, there are some things that the Spirit of God has put in my heart that I need to say to you today. So I want you to be anointed to hear if I am anointed to speak, and I've asked God for that, then I want you also to be anointed to hear. Sometimes we miss something that is said under the anointing because we were not anointed to hear. So if you're anointed to hear and I'm anointed to speak, the word's already anointed. So then we've got a combination that God can do something special with. And I say that not only to those of you who are in the house, but those who may be listening to this by video. I have a word from the Lord. Matter of fact, I have two words from the Lord today. The first one is that God spoke to me a couple of days ago, a few days ago. We had uh, one Bible study already in this new year. And I spoke something that the Lord had put in my heart, but this really should have been the first thing that was said this year. Uh, but because I wasn't able to get to some other stuff, I had to, I had to do that last week. So this, consider this as the first word of the year. Now, God spoke to me a few days ago. I sat up after waking up. I sat up in the bed. And uh, as is my custom, I keep a pen and pad next to my bed on the nightstand there. And as I wake up, usually, if I tarry a moment, God starts speaking to me. And uh, somebody said, well, that's strange. Are you hearing voices? Listen, I think it's strange when I don't hear his voice. <laughs> and uh, I think that we ought to approach life that way. We ought to expect God to communicate with us. And if he's not communicating with you, then uh, maybe you should find out why. Amen. But anyway, I sat up, God started talking to me, and I started writing things down, and God said this, 
you're not there anymore. And I had to ponder that a moment, and I'm thinking I'm not there anymore. And then God continued to speak, and he said, 2020 is done. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jesus. You're not there Thank you, Lord. anymore. And then he said, put it behind you and move forward. Put it behind you and move forward. God doesn't have a reverse. We, uh, on the farm years ago, we had a, an old car that didn't have a reverse. I don't know if it played out or got broken or what, you know, but it didn't have a reverse. So when you parked that car, you had to park it so you could pull off, not you were going back out of it. <laughs> and uh, then at later on, here's an interesting, later on, we had an old car that only had a reverse. <laughs> and uh, we had to back everywhere we go. Now, my grandpa... He, he drove, when he got in the car to drive, where it was he needed to go, he went there. Whether there was a road to the, go there or not, he'd drive out through the cornfield, he'd drive out through the wheat field, he'd drive through the ditches and the gullies and the, and the woods and every which way. But there was a time, it was an old station wagon, I believe it was a Dodge or a Plymouth or something. This was back in the 50s. And uh, it had no forward gear. It only had a reverse. So everywhere we went, we had to drive backwards. And Grandpa put his... Look backwards and go... It was the normal mode of transportation at that point because it was just the way it was. So... Uh, but God has no reverse. God moves forward. Now, he may move in a circle and bring you back around to point A so that you'll understand that what goes around comes around. But he's going to get there going forward either way. But my point is, God says you're not there anymore. It's done. Put it behind you and move forward. Now, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, Solomon said... To everything, there is a season and a time for every purpose. Verse 5 of that chapter says, and this is a paraphrase, it said a time to hold on and a time to let go. A time to hold on and a time to let go. And uh, I want to say to you that we need to know what season it is, what time it is, and we need to stop holding on to things that God has let go of. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to know what needs to be held on to and what needs to be let go of. Now, that's a whole message within itself. But I have a point to make here that God has put in my heart, so stay with me. Remember, you're anointed to hear, so hear with anointing. In Revelation chapter 1 and verse 11, Jesus identifies himself to the Apostle John on the island of Patmos. And his identification was multifaceted. But the one that I want to emphasize to you is, I am the Alpha and the Omega. That means I'm the one that starts it and I'm the one that finishes it. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the first and I am the last. So Jesus in talking with me that day, wanted me to understand I am the Omega. If I say to you that's done, 
then it's done. Right. You, you, mm -hmm. Are you still here? Yes. Yeah. Okay. I want you to get this in, in your mind. Now, we have entered in, in the Gregorian calendar, to the year 2021. In the Hebrew calendar, that is the year 5781. But we're not in the Hebrew calendar in America. We are in the Gregorian calendar. So it's the year 2021. Now that's interesting to me because 21 is a prime number both spiritually and naturally. I am told that the number 21 is a triple triangular number. Now since I am not a mathematician, I do not even know what that means. But I know it sounds awfully important. And I think that it is important in the great scheme of things. But 21 is a triple triangular number. number. And if you look at the Star of David, you'll see that it is a six-pointed star or two triangles, one right side up and one upside down. So triangles, I believe, were important. Look at the uh, pyramids. That's a triangle uh, with dimensions. And I believe that, that uh, it wasn't just man that made that. I believe that the Hebrew people had a lot to do with that because when God made a covenant with Abraham, he said to him, I want you to take a good look at the sand and take a good look at the stars. God was teaching him things about heaven and earth. And he spent some time in Egypt and uh, I think he passed some things along. Now, I, that's all I wanted to to. to deal with that about. But the number 21, back to the number 21, it's the, it's the number of 7 and 3 put together. 7 times 3 or 3 times 7 is 21. Both of those numbers, 3 and 7, are very important numbers spiritually. 3 is a divine number of divine perfection. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Seven is a divine number. So is ten, so is twelve, and some others. But those are not my emphasis today. Seven is the number of completion, fulfillment. The number after seven is eight, and that is the number of new beginning. So I want you to see that 21 is three seven which means completed and done. So I want to tell you, entering into 2021 is triple done. Amen. If God says it's done, it's done. Okay, now, understanding that, our job is to move forward. The number 21 in the Hebrew culture means the time for justice that produces relief from distress. Let me say that again. 21 in the Hebrew culture means the time for justice that produces relief from distress. All of these things are important. That means something. So now just, just understand God says something's done, it's done. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And if that number has, has definition, we need to understand why God said to that in 2021, why God said that to us in 2021. That's an important thing because even the number has a, has a meaning. You know, in Hebrew, letters have numerical value. That's the reason you find things in Hebrew, like when it's talking about the, 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 the Antichrist, it says the number of his name is. 
and it gives you the number 666. Correct. Well, I'm not, that's not my subject, and I'm not going to be so dealing good. with that, but I want to tell you that in Hebrew, uh, it's called gematria, or I may be mispronouncing that. It's G-E-M-T-R-I-A, I believe. Gematria, or something like that. That is the numerical value of letters in the Hebrew alphabet. So, uh, the number Jesus, the name of Jesus is 888. Oh. The number of the Antichrist is 666. Six is the number of man. Three is the number of divinity. So if the Antichrist's name is 666, it means he's a man that wants to be God. <laughs> and we know that's true. Anyway, I, 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 all that's beside the point. I'm saying that in 2021, God said, 2020 is done. Move forward. Not to the side. Not angle ways. Not backwards. Forward. Yeah. Right, uh, did you hear that now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I can move on, I guess. <laughs> Moving forward. I want you to understand that the prince of Persia could only withstand Daniel's answer to prayer for 21 days. That is significant. That number was given on purpose. And when Gabriel showed up, Gabriel said, God heard you from the first day. But the prince of Persia was restraining me from getting through until Michael came and opened the way. And now I'm here and Michael's waiting for me and, and I'll get back through. Now, back in those days, it was Old Testament, and that's when Jacob dreamed that angels were ascending and descending on a ladder because it was God trying to tell Jacob that angels come and go. But we're not in the Old Testament anymore. We're in a new covenant. When Jesus came, he blew a hole in the heavens, and the angels are not coming and going. They are sent. Hebrews 1.14, are not all his angels ministering spirits sent forth to minister to those who are the heirs of salvation? How many heirs of salvation do we have in the house today? Right here. Then there are angels here to minister on, for, for, for God in your behalf. Amen. And you might as well know that because it's real whether you understand it or not. If you have help and you know it, it's different than having help and not knowing it. Okay, I, I, there's a lot of truth here today. And listen to me. The Bible says ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall do what? Set you free. Set you free. Make you free. Well, if a truth makes you free, what does a lie do? It binds you. It binds you. It binds you in one form or another. Amen. Amen. So, I'm telling you the truth, and if you'll hear the nuggets that I'm putting out to you today, they'll speak to you. you I know God. I know how he works. And he, there's little rabbit trails <laughs> going on in your mind as I'm speaking today, and that's normal and natural and good. Fine. But please hear the import of what God is saying. Now, here we go. When God got ready to deal with 430 years of trouble, for Israel. They had been slaves. They had been captives, so to speak. They had been economically oppressed. Uh, oppressed in the labor market. They, they were an oppressed people because they were in Egypt, but they were not Egyptians. And for many, many generations and decades, they had been there. And they cried out to God, and God heard their cries, set a bush on fire, and Moses, who had formerly been in, in Egypt, had fled for his life because he was taken up for the Jews, of which he was one, and did something he shouldn't have done, and he had to run for his life, and for 40 years well, had been out in the middle of nowhere. But then... 
when God heard the cries of his people, a bush caught on fire out there where Moses was. He turned aside to see and God started talking to him. Told him to take his shoes off. Told him he had some things to say to him. And started telling him how he wanted him to go back to Egypt and get those people free that he was hearing their cries. And Moses put up objections. You know, I, I can't talk. I'm, you know, I, I don't know what kind of a speech impediment he might have had, but he said he couldn't talk. And God said, I will be with thy mouth. Every preacher needs that promise. I will be with thy mouth. Amen. And some of them need for the Lord to say, I will be with thy head. But anyway, I'm going to leave that right there. Now here we go. God sent Moses, sent Aaron along with him. They went back to to. Uh, to Egypt, said to Pharaoh, God said, let his people go. Well, that started a downslide of things getting worse and worse and worse. You think if God has moved, things going to get better. But sometimes <laughs> they get worse before they get better. Because God deals with fullness. Not just time and dates. God pours, and when the cup gets full, then as far as God's concerned, it's time to deal with something. And so there had to be a fullness of Pharaoh's rejection of God before God would move and deal with him. And you know the story. I don't have to rehearse all the plagues and all that that came and this, that, and the other. Finally, uh, they kept making deals and whatever. And finally, they walked out the gates. They walked out the gates of Egypt free. But once they got out, Pharaoh changed his mind yet again. There you go. Put his soldiers and his chariots and his horses in array and took out after them. Well, you know and I know the end of that story. But I want to tell you that God let things run their course for 21 days. Wow. And on the 21st day, this is in your Bible. That's the one you got right there in front of you. It's in that one. On the 21st day, not on the 19th day, not on the 20th, not on the... Not on the 23rd. On the 21st day. Why? Because 21 means that it's the time for justice that will produce relief from distress. On the 21st day, God dealt with Pharaoh. Moses stood up and under the anointing of God, he said, take a good look back there at Pharaoh and all that army of his. Because it's the last time you're going to see them. You won't see them anymore. And they didn't in that form. They did see their bodies wash up on shore. Along with horses and chariots and everything. Because angels went in and took the wheels off of their chariots. The devil has no authorization to go where God takes you. That's right. Okay. Now, having said that. In Genesis chapter 19, verse 17, God has dispatched angels to go and deal with the wickedness that existed in Sodom and Gomorrah. Those angels stopped by Abraham's tent on the way because God tells his people what he's about to do. Amos chapter 3, verse 3 says, God will do nothing but that he reveal it unto his prophets. Why? He doesn't have to do that in heaven, but in earth, God has put man in charge, and he has a covenant and an agreement with man, and he uses man to work with him. You understand that? Or at least righteous men. Now, here's the thing. God said that these angels are to go and to deal judgment to Sodom and Gomorrah. But 
Abraham's also went nephew was down there in Sodom. Now, God didn't call Lot to go out. He called Abraham, but I, I think I said this to you last week. Lot also went. Listen, you got a lot of also went ministries around here. <laughs> That's a trick. They just also went. God didn't call them, but they just also went. And, and that's not necessarily bad. It's just not necessarily anointed. Hello? Okay. Now, here's the thing. When, when, when uh, these angels spoke to Abraham, told him that they were going to destroy, he said, well, well, I got family down there. He said, uh, if I can find 50 people, will you, will you spare it? And the angel says, yeah, we'll spare it for 50 people, which was God's plan all along. God wanted the man to get involved. Well, they couldn't find 50 people. Then they couldn't find 40. Then they couldn't find, and they got down to what, 10? And God said, yeah, if you'll find 10, we'll, we'll spare them. Well, they could, evidently, they couldn't find 10. <laughs> So Abraham said, well, at least let me get Lot out. God said, okay. And so the, the angels went down to Lot's house. And before they could even get in Lot's house, the sinful nature of the people in that area tried to accost the angels. Uh -huh. It's in your Bible. Uh -huh. And the angels had to strike them with blindness so they couldn't even find the door. Well, anyway, they're taking Lot and his family out, or at least the ones that would go. And uh, so here they are, and in Genesis nineteen seventeen, Lot is dragging his feet. I mean, evidently... He, he had a vested interest in that city and, and cared about it and, and whatever. I don't know. But he kept dragging his feet and the angel said, hurry up. Get, let's get this done. Let's do this. And so then he had to say to Lot, look not behind thee. And stay not in this place. Now that's in your Bible. Mm -hmm. I hear the Lord saying that to us. Look not behind thee mm -hmm. and stay not in this place. Now he's talking about in that past situation. Don't stay there. Stay there. Mm -hmm. Don't look back to it and don't stay in it. Mm -hmm. Move on. Well, evidently Lot got the message. He started moving a little faster. But his wife didn't hardly get it. Because in Luke chapter 17, verse 32, Jesus, hundreds of years later, mentions Lot's wife. When he says, remember Lot's wife. And why would he say that? Because she looked back. She looked back. And when she looked back, I don't know if she got distracted and fell in a like a slime pit or something and got and quicksand, you know, whatever, and just, and and just died and 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 was turned into a pillar of salt. See, we say well she was turned into, and we think well God just reached down and poured salt on her. And, no, I don't think it happened that way, but. Whatever it was, it stuck her and froze her in that place. In other words, God said, if you don't get out, you won't ever get out. Move on. Move on. Now, did you ever notice that the big difference in your car is that the windshield is huge and the rearview mirror is small? What does that say to you? What's in front is much more you important. You made a mistake. <laughs> <laughs> What's behind you does not matter. Right. <laughs> in other words, it's made to go forward. 
You can back it up. It's not like Grandpa's call. You can back it up. But it's not made to get out on the interstate and go in reverse. As a matter of fact, there's plenty of view for the front, very little view for the back. Why? Because if you're looking back, you're not watching where you're going. Amen. And if you're not watching where you're going, you're either going to miss your turn or run into somebody or run over something or what. You have to move forward. Isn't it interesting that God put our eyes in the front and not in the back? Yeah. Although I, I swore many times that my mama had eyes in the back. You're right. <laughs> but she really did. But animals are made for moving forward. Now we can walk backwards, but your knees don't bend that way. Your knees are bent to run forward, to walk forward. You are not made for backward. God in his creative genius had a purpose and a plan. Yes, sir. Would it be all right, though, if we had necks like hawks and owls, though? We could look all directions. <laughs> okay, I give, I give you permission to do that. <laughs> For those of you on the camera that didn't hear that, <laughs> asinine statement. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm only playing with you, man. He said, what if we had necks like owls and hawks and we could turn all the way around? God didn't make us that way. Because we're not supposed to be that way. God wants us forward-minded. Forward-minded. Forward-moving. Now, here's the thing. I say that a lot, don't I? Here's the thing. I'm glad we say that. Luke chapter 17, Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. And the reason is, she looked back, she was told not to, and she paid a price and got stuck there and was not delivered with the rest of them. Years ago on the farm, my, my grandpa taught me a very valuable lesson. I think I may have shared this with you before. But we had an old mule named Red Pepper. That was his name. Wow. Grandpa told me all kinds of stories about that mule. He told me that that mule could see through the barn wall. Of course, he couldn't. <laughs> but I, and I don't know why Grandpa told me all that stuff. He was messing with me. He told me I could put salt. If I could put salt on a rooster's tail, I could catch that rooster. I chased roosters all over the yard trying to catch them with a salt check. It never dawned on me. If you can get that close to a rooster, you probably caught him already. But anyway. And, and, but, but my thing is, who wants to catch a rooster? <laughs> They'll hurt you. But anyway. So Grandpa told me all kinds of stories about that old mule. But one thing that he taught me, he had about three tractors. But some of the places, he didn't take the tractors. He plowed them with that mule. He didn't trust me with the tractor. But he trusted me with that mule. And here's what Grandpa told me. One of the best things I ever learned. He said, now, son, you see that tree in the distance yonder? It's the edge of the woods. It's a big big oak tree or something. I said, yes, sir. He said, now, you keep Pepper going toward that. Now, you know, if you plow it, G and Ha left and right, get it up and whoa. G and Ha and get it up whoa is all you need to know <laughs> to plow with a mule. So you kept him going. You, you kept your eye on that tree and kept Pepper moving toward that tree. Then the rest of it was academic because from then on, every row you plowed just had to be right next to the last row right. because your first row was straight. Grandpa taught me in order to plow a straight row, eyes forward. Right. Look in the distance. No runner runs a race looking at his feet. He looks toward the finish line. He looks toward what's ahead. God said, you're not there anymore. Put it behind you. Move forward. Now, you and I both know that 2020 was some kind of a messed up year. Are you telling me? 
I don't know of anybody that wanted it to last. Everybody was saying, I'll be glad when this year is over. So, so, so why would God tell me, don't try to stay there? <laughs> it's because some of the hurts, some of the complications, some of the stuff, is still hanging on you from there. Amen. Thank you. And you need to dump that Amen. and move forward. Amen. Hello? Mm -hmm. Amen. I agree. Because <laughs> God's not done yet. God is not done yet. You may think he's done. Listen, things are not as they appear. Things are not as they appear. God is still at work. Okay. Now here we go. In Luke chapter 9, verse 62, and Jesus said, No man, having put his hand to the plow and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. In other words, I put you in my harvest field. I put you there to get something done. You're not going to do that looking back. Amen. If you put your hand to the plow, keep plowing. Amen. And I want to say to you in this year, God's got things for you to do. God's got things for you to be. God's got things for you to hear. God's got things for you to say. Amen. Listen up. Pay attention. Move forward. Turn around and look at somebody and say, move forward. Move forward. Move forward. Move forward. God's not standing still. God is at work. That's right. Woo. I wish I could tell you what I know, but I can't. <laughs> The Lord gave Amen. the Lord gave me other words. One of the things that Jesus said to his disciples was, "I have yet many things to say to you, but you cannot hear them now. Howbeit, when He, the Spirit of Truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth." He goes on to say, he'll tell you things to come. But Jesus said to his disciples, as astute as they were compared to the average person of that day, he said, I have a lot of things that I would like to tell you, but I can't because you're not able to hear it. Now, whatever you need to do to get able to hear, do it. Because God's got some things to say this year. Okay? Amen. I don't want God saying that to me. Because the Holy Ghost is in my life. And I'm not just anointed to speak. I'm anointed to hear. That's what God wants us to be. Amen? Amen. Amen? Now, God gave me, I told you at the beginning of this, God gave me two words, and he did. He gave me a word for a situation where I was to preach a funeral. He gave me a word for that. But two days ago, I, and I preached the funeral, I gave that word at the funeral. Two days ago, God spoke to me and said, that word that I gave you was a, was a tri-level word. Or a, no, it wasn't tri-level. He said a tri-fold word. It was a tri, in other words, it was for three separate things. Well, it was for where I preached it. But God said to me two days ago, he said that was a tri-fold. Old word. 
Now here's what the word was. Are you ready for this? Yeah. And this is scripture. But it's the word that God gave to me and I had to go find it in the scriptures. <laughs> it's in Isaiah 7 and in Isaiah 28. But here's the word. Take heed. Be still. Fear not. Neither be faint hearted. For thus saith the Lord. It shall not stand. Neither shall it come to pass. The covenant with death shall be annulled. I'm going to read it to you again. Mm -hmm. This is the word God gave me. That's powerful. I preached it at Isaiah the funeral seven, because it was apropos. But then God said, this is a trifold word. I'm giving it now for the second time. You ready? Mm -hmm. God said, take heed, be still. Fear not, neither be faint-hearted. For thus saith the Lord, it shall not stand, neither shall it come to pass. The covenant with death shall be annulled. Now that's what God said. Isaiah 7 and what? It's Isaiah 7, 4 and 7 and Isaiah 28, 18. Got it. Now then, are you ready to move forward? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Where the focus goes, the power flows. I had a son who, uh, not a son, a grandson, more like a son, a grandson who was in karate class. He's not now, but he was back in that day. And the karate instructions teach those kids certain techniques of, of life and of self-defense and of fighting. And I remember he would take his, his hands in a fist and have one stretched out and one tucked back under his chest here. And as he pulled this one back, he would pull this one over and turn it over. But he had to learn to do it really quick. And these two knuckles, the first two knuckles of his hands were the focal point. Whatever it was he was going to hit, you know, their, 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 their uh, philosophy is aim small, miss small. Mm -hmm. So here he is. And he had to learn to snap it. And as he snapped it, he had to release from inside. And he said, hey, oh! yeah. That's a poor effort on my part. Because everything I do at 74 is in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> but it was about focus. Because if you focus your attention, if you focus your energy, if you focus your your uh, your uh, self at a point. If you aim small, you miss small. Uh, if you if you focus on that point, all of the energy in you will be released at that point. Mm -hmm. So focus is something that is both natural and spiritual. Focus points, focal points. You have to look where God directs your gaze. You have to speak to what God wants you to speak to. Jesus spoke 
to a fig tree. He spoke to. If he hadn't focused on that one fig tree, all the trees around there would have died. Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves. He said to the wind, peace. Peace. And he spoke to the waves, be still. Peace. Be still. As long as there was no peace in the atmosphere, there would be no stillness in the way. Because the wind was stirring the way. He focused. Peace, be still. You see what I'm saying? Focus, focal point. That's forward. It's not back there. It's up here. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And God is saying, you now have passed a point where this is done and this needs to be done. So put your attention here. Don't linger on the pains. Don't linger on the losses. Don't linger on the hurts. Don't linger on the lies. Don't linger on the trouble. Don't linger on the storms. Focus! Because God is still in the lead. He's still directing. He is still moving. He is still in charge. He's more in charge now than he's ever been. Things don't just happen. You're a fool if you think things just happen. No way, Jose. This is God's earth. We think we did something. We think we made something.